Hi, welcome to my channel, The Art of Wigs with V. And I'm just getting started, so if the name of my channel changes a couple of times, that's possible. Um, my name is actually Victoria Grace, but most of my close friends call me V. I consider wig sisters to be friends, so please feel free to call me that. I would uh, like to talk to you a bit about wearing wigs, um, and altering them, making them your own, uh, getting comfortable in them, looking in the mirror and recognizing yourself. I found that on YouTube there are a lot of wig reviews. A lot of the reviewers are, I would say, anywhere between in their 20s to maybe in their 50s. But there aren't very many that are true seniors. Um, and that kind of bothers me because as I've aged, I really would like to see modern styles on people who are seniors. I'm age 73 and I've been wearing wigs for 12 years. I trim my own wigs. I alter them. I alter the caps. So, um, I have a lot of information and I am an art teacher, so teaching is kind of in my blood. So if I can help you with anything, then please stop back and watch my channel from time to time. Be sure that you give it a like and subscribe so that you'll get notifications when I do post. The wig that I'm wearing today is called Perry by Aesthetica. The color is Chrome. RT1B. It is a silver color with a black root. Now, I love this color. I went through a phase where I went from my natural, really deep brunette colors to transitioning into blondes and um, becoming more cool colored blondes. Then I, an optician actually talked me into buying black frame glasses. Well, when I did that, I didn't like myself when I looked in the mirror in black frame glasses with the lighter blonde hair, with any shade of blonde that I had. I love them on other people, don't get me wrong. I think they're very classic looking. I think they go with everything. I think they're fabulous, but they just weren't for me. So, um, I ended up actually changing my hair so that my glasses would seem like they went with it. And I can't afford a, multiple pairs of glasses to change all the time. And I have to wear glasses all the time, every day. I have trifocals, I can't wear progressives. So, um, I started going into the grays because my hair is very, very dark, almost black. Uh, it's very thinned on the top. Um, I have a bit of silver just along the edge a little bit. And um, I got a lot of compliments on this color. I still like this color today. However, um, I think I've embraced my silver period. And I now I just wanna play with some color again. And so I've kind of been going back to some of my my blondes, my um, more cool tone blondes, we'll call them, and wearing them again. And uh, the glasses, uh, I had, this is my second pair of the style glasses. I had them in a kind of a, they were kind of a light beige gold color that looked really good with the blondes. And uh, when I got the black ones, then I uh, I didn't have two sets of lenses, so I couldn't wear them to, uh, for when I switched hair colors. So the, my favorite color is the color you see me in, which is like a blue kind of pink, more on that kind of purple side, some people call it. So basically what I did with the golder tone ones was, and they're plastic, so I painted them with nail polish uh, in this color. And I've been wearing those since. Uh, my optician popped my lenses out of the black ones and she put them in these. But I'm about due for an eye exam again soon. 
We'll see. We'll see what I come up with. But oftentimes I do change my color of my glasses when I'm tired of them by using nail polish. So uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Perry. You may have said, be saying to yourself, well, that's not like the Perry I've seen before. It's really flat. And yes, it comes to you very flat. I have made some alterations to Perry. I did not have to alter my cap size. I am a petite circumference of 20 and one half inches going around this way. My ear to ear measurement, which is actually very important, especially if you're wanting to wear glasses every day, is 11 inches. And my top from my hairline to the bottom of my occipital bone is only 11 inches. That puts me in almost a child size in some manufacturers. Uh, petites would probably fit me better. However, I've not found a petite in a style and a color that I like. So I've never ordered one and tried them. So I just learned how to alter them by going to YouTube videos. You can do the same thing and alter your caps. It's really quite easy. So when Perry came to me, I didn't have to alter it. I just had to cinch the adjusters in the back end until I only had about an inch in between them and it fit and it didn't buckle anywhere around the edges. That didn't seem to be too much and it, it fits fine. I can't grab a bunch of cap up here it fits nicely to the crown of my head. It has a lace front, temple to temple, uh, which is nice. It's a very nice lace front. I'll show it to you. It's almost non-detectable. I don't have it glued on this side. You can see here it is right here. There's my banner here. I'm gonna melt this off. Why do I glue it? Because of my small head shape, sometimes lace fronts don't lay very flat for me. That's difficult. So I use It Stays, which is a body adhesive that's water soluble and just wipes right off. And if I just lifted the wig up right now, it'll come right off and you're gonna see that in a minute. But Perry came like this. Let me get my glasses off and show you. Out of the box. This is pretty much what it looked like. Except, you see these shorter pieces here? I cut those into it. This whole piece was this entire length here. I felt this made me look older maybe. I like a smooth look, but I've always had kind of spiked and wild hair. So it was a little hard for me to get used to. And um, so I just went in here and I made some circles in here and got it off the cap with some John Renault pea silk cream. This is what it looks like. You only use about a dime size on your fingers. Rub them together until they get real warm. And you go in with your fingertips at the base and you swirl things around. You should do that with every wig when you get it out of the box anyway to loosen up the fibers, get it off the cap because it's been in a box, okay? So I went in and I did that all over it. It's still went pretty flat, right? So I um, decided I could still work with it. And I went and keep going. I go in with my hands like this, sometimes with a little bit of John Renault Fiber Love Spray on my fingertips. Like this, rub them together and go in there. It's like a holding spray. I also believe that in this one right now, I have something called Got to Be Glued Styling and Spiking Gel. A very minute amount or things will get rigid and stiff. It's probably about as big around as my little finger. And I've just rubbed it in and gone in and did a lift here. Kind of lifted that up. So I kind of had some off my face and over. What's great about Perry, it has an undercut under here, under the long side. See, you get, you get a sideburn. There. So you can tuck it behind your ear. You already got the side burn there. You can take this side and tuck it under your ear. Behind it. This side on the undercut for me doesn't lay quite as well. It's probably just because I haven't worked with that much because I have the long side. But you pull them forward. The, my glasses are wide bows. 
um, that's harder to fit underneath the wig tab. It drives me nuts to have uh, my wig between the ear tab and my hair. I like it under the ear tab or as close to there as I can possibly get. Because of the trifocal, things will be distorted if they don't lay exactly in the right spot. So, I got some lift out of her, all right, and I'm okay with her. I also, here's her, her actual part. She has a monofilament part. is about right here, and it goes, but it goes a distance, maybe from here to here. And I parted this, just the front part over a little more to give me this up and over look. And I like that better. It felt more modern. And, um, and she's got a little bit of box hair back here right now. Because I've had her in her box stored, I haven't worn her in maybe a couple of months. Maybe three months. Or maybe only once in three months. Anyway, so sometimes the fibers get bent a little bit if you're storing them in a box, or when they come to you from the manufacturer, they'll be, they can have box hair. It'll just take a soap and some cold water. She needs a wash anyway. So, I see some shorter fibers over here on Perry. So it's a cute wig. If you like a flatter style, you can do that with her. You can put her behind your ears. You can get her quite sleek. Typically, most reviews I've seen of her they leave her kind of flat. And they say, if you like a flat wig, that's what she does. She doesn't have to do that. But many reviewers don't put any product in their wigs when they're reviewing. Well, I'm going to put this tab underneath my glasses. There we go. And I'm going to come in here and show you how when it's behind my ears, I just pull out that little bit of undercut. Never seen a wig with an undercut before. So that's what's great about her. So, that's Perry. But um, she, oh, she has great stays back here. It, she has an extended nape, which for me is really good because I have such, I have hair that grows down very long on my neck down here. I have to shave it every day. And um, when I pull this, you don't pull a wig any further than your occipital bone. It lays right under that. It lives under the occipital bone. So when you have an extended nape, about this long, there's a piece back there that goes down and then the hair comes out that, which takes it even longer because she has a very short nape. I want to say it's something like 1.4 inches. So covering my bio hair back there would be an issue. I'll turn and show you the, the sides. There's the undercut and the back. See if I can get myself turned in this position so you can see this side. And I'm back to the front. So I just have a foot caught, so give me a second. <laughs> Sorry, got it caught in the leg of my spinning chair. Uh, but I want to talk to you about a different wig today. One that I've seen in I think three reviews only. It's by Ellen Villa. It's called Bliss. Um, I do like pixie cuts. Not sure they are the best look on me, but that's what I always wear my hair very short. I think the best look on you is something that you feel comfortable in. <coughs> Excuse me. And in the summer months, your head can get really hot. So open caps and, um, and big pixie cuts often are an answer to not having a lot of hair down on your neck and a lot of hair up here. So um, I'm going to show you Bliss because I think there's some aspects to Bliss that don't really get covered much in the, in the reviews I did see. Um, and she's right behind me, and let me grab her. First, I'm going to take this off as soon as I get her down here because I don't want to have this off too long. I'm actually looking for my wig grip. Hmm, I wonder what I did with it. Well, I might have to do it with it. Oh, I got it on. <laughs> What's wrong with me? Hang on. Let me get her down. Here she is. This is Bliss by Ellen Villa in Salt and Pepper. In actuality, I need to get her away from the lights. She's very dark in the back. Quite dark, like this. Like it looks back here, not quite, not light as it looks up here. It has minute um, 
fibers, I mean very soft, tiny fibers, that are sewn into the dark, dark gray to called salt and pepper. Then it gradually gets more white. Excuse my crazy lady here. This is a styrofoam wig head that I collaged and painted on with positive affirmations. She's just fun, I put her on a bottle. So um, it gets whiter in the front and there are some black hairs sh sh uh, sewn into it. So I got her on a clearance sale at a very reputable dealer because on clearance sales, you don't really ever know what you're really going to get and they're not returnable. So I made sure I did buy it from some, a dealer that I'm used to using and that I thought would um, probably not give me something really bad. So I'm gonna try her on and I'll tell you a little bit about her. Here she comes off here. We'll put this gal away. And I'm going to take off this Harry's coming off. This is me on natural. And my wig grip is coming off. Might as well show you something about that. As you can see, my hair is very dark. I have it buzzed very short in the back. Sometimes in summer, I buzz this totally down, so there's hardly anything there. But this summer, I haven't done that. Uh, it's been a cool summer for Michigan, and I haven't found the need to. So. This is my wig grip. It was a Milano wig grip, okay? It's old, I need a new one. I actually have several, um, but this is the one that I'm kind of drawn to because I'm comfortable in it. Actually, I put it on like this. Do you see these curves in it? And you're like, what is that? Looks like it's falling apart. I actually cut those. As you can see, they fit around my ears. So that my glasses don't have extra bulk above my ears, where my ears fit, and my head, so I can get them on and off without having to be over that. Because like I said, they have to sit in exactly the right place. So that's very easy. I just took scissors and just cut out to give me, so that I have a finger's width between where my ear hooks on my head and where my wig will sit and where the wig grip will sit. Might be just a hair higher than that. That will help you tremendously with if you're wearing glasses all the time, especially if they're not wires and they're more of a thicker bow like mine are. All right, so this is Ellen Villa's Bliss. Bliss is considered to be a, uh, have a mono crown. Mono is where you could see through it. If something up in the crown, if somebody stood over you and they looked down on you, uh, they could, it would look like skin. It wouldn't, uh, wouldn't look like any permatease and so on. It's very low in permatease, as a matter of fact. Ellen Villa makes wonderful, um, wonderful pixie wigs. Um, and their colorations are beautiful on Ellen Villa. I think they take a lot of care and time with them. This is probably exactly how um, somebody with really dark hair would gray. Typically you gray in the front. It's a way of showing a transition with a lot of dimension there. It's considered to have a mono lace front. I'm going to show that to you inside out. This is this is the uh, inside out version of her. This is a kind of a closed cap here. The, if there the any permatease there is lives under this. It's not a lot. It's a, it's a small amount. Uh, it has a temple to temple lace front going across the front. You can see that. See the checkerboard pattern in it? I don't know if that's only this unit or all of them in salt and pepper, but there seems to be dark hairs that are sewn into those areas. So I'm guessing that's supposed to be that way. It might not be with another color. Here's the mono crown, which has lace on it. Okay, and I'm going to put my finger in there and you'll see. Now I'm gonna, it, she seems to be quite stretchy this way. Um, I did see one reviewer who had a, a circumference of 21 and a half who said it was rather tight on her. Um, and then I've seen another reviewer who had over a 22 inch head who said it was very comfortable. So um, there is a variance between different wigs in the same style. Um, they allow a 20% variance, kind of.
kind of like your um, generic drugs. Okay, they, they allow quite a variance from pill to pill and then the amount that you get. So when you get her out of the box, you want to give her a really good shake. Right side over. Get those fibers off the cap. Well, I'll show you that. It does have an extended cap here. And Velcro adjusters which are my favorite adjusters, or the bra strap kind. Um, and usually because my head is smaller, when I get it so where it's in a place where I really like it, I just take a needle and thread and a couple of little, and I stretch it out like this, and I go in with the needle and thread and I just put a couple of little stitches in there just to hold it in place. So I, I'm not dealing with it popping up like this right here. See how this is popping up? I took the thread out so that you could see that. Sometimes the bow of my glasses, the end of it will get stuck under there. And then it skews my glasses just ever, ever so slightly. And I feel slightly dizzy because my vision is off. So now I want to show you something interesting here. Now, I'm going to put my finger in that mono crown part. And I'm going to put it up close. And I want you to look at it and tell me whether or not you can see skin. With these lights, I can see a little bit. But look at, would you even worry about that? I don't know if I'd worry about it enough to have that there, but it's a nice feature, I guess. So, in regard to the lace on the front, no one in the reviews I've seen have mentioned this. So, my unit could be just a one-off, meaning it got some different lace on the front, maybe. But I find this to be the roughest lace I have ever felt in a, in a wig. That's not really something that would be considered typical of Ellen Burr wigs. So why it was on clearance could have been that reason. I have no way of knowing that. However, I have a very sensitive head and the lace does not bother me. I thought it would, but I don't feel it as itchy when, or stiff when I get it on. So now I'm going to put it on. So I'm going to start by, first I want to show you that the wig grip goes on here. This is, I have a widow's peak. So I put my wig grip on so that my widow's peak is out. And it's back on my head a little bit. Okay. Then it goes down behind your ears and it goes right under the occipital bone, which if you put your hand back there, you can feel where the curve in your head is. And you take your finger and go down and where it goes down is where you're going to hook the wig grip right under there. Now if you have a more flat occipital bone you're gonna to have to try to put it where you believe that would be and you might want to put some it stays or something on it if it wants to ride up on you. Also if a wig rides up on you in the back while you're wearing it most of the time it's because it's too small for you. Okay, So we're gonna put it on like this. And put it on my forehead first, slide it all the way over my head, just past that wig grip. So it's slivin, the edge of it slivin before the before that extended nape. It's living right there in the at the bottom of under the occipital bone where that dent would be. Now I'm gonna come up here. You can see it's obviously crazy, right? Alright, so I'm gonna first I'm gonna go to my temple tabs. They're right here. There's one, there's one. And I'm going to go make sure the wig is seated. So I go one, two, three, four. That makes them seated so it's not sitting askew. And they have little stays in them. You kind of just curve them with your, with your, yeah, I use my middle finger and my thumb, but you use your first finger and your thumb and curve them just ever so slightly so they're toward your head, not turned out. If they're turned out, your wig's gonna look funny. Then you come up here and you figure out where's your hairline. If you don't have any hair at all, you have to do something to figure out where would your hairline be. Now, part of that could be visual for you, like where do you think it looks best on you? But a good rule of thumb is to do, go four fingers above where you would have eyebrows, if you don't have any, or above where you have eyebrows, if you do, and take it up to about four fingers. Four, sometimes, some people it's four and a half, some people it's only three. I have a very low forehead. 
my forehead is only two and a half inches from my hairline to my eyebrows. So I'm gonna pull this up so it's just, I can just see the edge of my widow's. You see, that's four fingers right here. She can just see the edge. Now she's in place. How she came out of the box is pretty much what you would saw in my hand. It was pretty flat like this. The stock photo of this wig shows it really a mess on the top. I, I wouldn't even call it spiked. I think it's just messy, like everywhere, going every which way. And I don't think it's very flattering to the wig, um, in all honesty. Now, see, I don't feel the lace at all. So that's good, because it's not scratching me. And I'm extremely sensitive. All right, so let's see what we can do with her. First, we're just gonna kind of smooth her down a little bit. Maybe like a pixie that's just kind of smooth like this. I mean, she doesn't look bad like that. But I have a small face, okay? So, if you have a wider face, you have to remember that all of that's going to affect how the wig looks, how long your forehead is, how long your face is. My face is only seven inches from um, my widow's peak to this point. So if your face were, say, nine inches, this is going to, these sides are going to be probably the shorter I am. I also reach up and feel and make sure that I have got that finger's width over my ears, over my ears, and I take it up a little bit over my glasses, so I just maybe move the weight a hair so it's comfortable on me, okay? I kind of like a little bit coming out of my sides, so I run my fingers up in it. There is no product in this wig, by the way. It's just cleanly washed. I've only wore it one time, and I've had it for about two months. So I'm gonna lift it up like this. I think she's cute. I might piece out some of these bangs a little bit. I tend to like a, a right-hand side part. This is a left part in the mirror it looks backwards in the in the video I'm sorry it looks backwards but that is the left side part I have a tendency to like a right side part on myself or I like the ability to be able to change it this does not have a mono part so you're not stuck with it being always on the left side you even aren't really with a mono part you can do a flip over and it looks modern and cute so uh, when I, you can see when I separate that out, you can start to see some of the dark hairs that are sewn into bliss, into the front. Let me see if I, I got a lace front here too, so I should be able to wear some of her up and over or off my face, right? I've not seen anyone style her this way either. Yet I don't know why. She's cute like that. I'm not putting any product in this wig. It's very, very manipulative. It responds very well to just your hands. I haven't used any tools to style it with. Your best tools are right here. You got 10 of them. Fingers, hopefully you got 10. Never know, right? Um, but they're your best tooling, your best tool you can use. It gets down, it lifts the hair off. In little circles, you lift the hair off the cap to set it free and then style it and figure out what you're going to do after that good shake. You could piece, pull out little spiky pieces like this and so they go together. Could I put product in if I wanted? Yes. I don't know if I need it. See, I, how's I'm going to look with it crazy totally off my face? Let's see. Maybe I want to go, I'm going to something, some kind of event that I need to have a more elegant kind of look. <laughs> I don't know if that's possible for me, but anyway, look at that. I'm not really seeing, I, with a little bit of it stays under there, I'd feel quite comfortable in having her off the face. And no, she's not itching me. Now I have to be honest, the normal Ellen Villa fibers itch me like crazy. Um, I've only had two over the course of 12 years that did not itch, and they were 
um, on a wig called Stream, which was really wild and crazy and curly, and I absolutely loved her. And she was very, she was short. Uh, one day my doctor told me I looked like Albert Einstein, though. <laughs> which I thought was hysterical. Anyway, um, but look at how you can, you can make her sleeked back. Bring a piece over to the side. I'm on the right side parting, remember. Let's try it around the left side like a lot of dogs. What can we do here? Let's see if we can just bring her over like this. Not sure she lays quite as good right there, but that just takes some manipulation and maybe some heat to your hand of your hand. And guess what? These fibers feel different than most Ellen Villa fibers for me. Um, Ellen Villa fibers have a tendency, I think, to feel dry. Not like bad dry hair, just drier than some brands of wigs, but not in a bad way. They don't look, make it look like your hair is dry or anything. Um, but this is a heat friendly one. So, you can actually take the curling iron on the recommended setting. And the box will come with a little pamphlet in it that will tell you that. And um, it comes in quite a few colors. You wouldn't have to get gray or salt and pepper. This was, I was still going through my gray first. Okay, so I got this color. Anyway, I haven't put any product in it. Let's just try putting some water in her and see what I can do with her, okay? I'm just gonna spray her down. Get her really wet. You can see that you're starting to see a little more darkness in her. That's because the fibers are getting separated more. That's just clear water. This is a little fancy bottle. I kind of got that for, for um, my painting. It doesn't work that well for painting. But it works good, great for hair. However, you could just buy a dollar store spray bottle it would work the same. There's no magic in the spray bottle. Okay, so here we go. Now I can pick her out here. See how PC she is? And how spiky now she is? Will she dry that way? Yes. She'll dry that way. And when you wash her, will she go flat again? Yes. Because that's how it was created. We've only used product or basically water. We could use John Rail pea soap cream too. But with this unit, I don't think you need product in her. Um, I think she's a cute pixie. I think she probably would work great for a lot of people. The measurements on this are supposed to be, according to Ellen Villa's site, um, the crown three inches, the front ending um, 3.7, I think it's 3.75, and the nape, 2.75. Now that two and three quarters for me is really nice. I really like a two and three quarter inch nape uh, a little bit better than I do like the one and a halves. However, I, I do wear one and a halves. Um, and it, with an extended nape, you even get more. All right, so let's see if we can do something really different with her. Let's see if Bliss would like to have a boha. left side and we just curve her up. Look what she's doing with my hands. She's not even, I didn't have to put anything in there to make her do that. So this new Ellen Villa fiber that is heat friendly is fabulous. It really is. It's very comfortable on me also. I'm not sure why I haven't been wearing it. I guess I've just been going. I don't know. But anyway, I think she's really cute. Um, I think she's really worth taking a look at. And if you like pixies, oh, the sides are supposed to be three inches. I'm not sure where they're measuring from. I'm going to guess because the, oh, the temple tabs are, uh, they have a little bit of felt on them. They're not real big, but they have a little bit of felt. You can see that right there. It's nice, it's comfortable. Um, 
forgot what I was saying. I'm having a senior moment. Isn't that what this is all about? This whole video is a senior moment. <laughs> I'm glad you joined me. But anyway, let's just take her, make her down here a little bit more. I kind of like that little bit longer bang look on her. She looks so casual for every day. And if I wanted to sleek her down and make her more, more, I don't know, what do you call it, stylish as far as going out or, you know, getting dressed up. Anyway, that's Bliss. I think she's great in salt and pepper. And did I forget to tell you anything? I don't think so. Anyway, come back and join me. And I'm glad you were here with me today. Um, and I enjoy talking to people. And I enjoy telling people lots of things. So see how this is a little long for me here. Hmm. What could I do with that? I'm gonna use, I don't know if I use, once I do this, you know, there's no going back. This is called a thinning comb or cutting comb. There's a razor blade in there, a wide one, and this one side has teeth beyond the razor and this one doesn't. So you wanna use the side that has teeth beyond the razor. I got this off Amazon. Look at this, you can take this and you can just comb through up where I think I wanna get it off. A little bit off can you see that? Where am I? Oh, camera. Yeah. <laughs> Find the camera, Vicky. There we are. So there's where there's a piece I took off. So yeah, you could always trim her bangs. Don't ever trim them with just scissors though. On any rig, because you're just gonna you're just going to make them blunt cut and they're not gonna look right. So always use thinning shears that are made for thinning hair so that you get an uneven kind of cut and then you can It'll look like it falls in place better. Or these combs are great. And they're not very expensive. So, I think I'm done with Bliss. Anyway, thanks for coming. You have a great day. Please like and subscribe. It helps me to know whether or not people want to hear what I have to say. And you take care. And have a blessed day.